Alright, what's up guys? It's Alineo, and today we're going to teach you guys how to escape your elo um, from bronze all the way to platinum. We're going to tell you guys the reasons why you're stuck in your specific elo, and then after that, we're going to say how to get out of it, how to break out of this elo that you've been in for a while. Now, obviously, I didn't include diamond because I personally didn't reach diamond. My highest was platinum, but even though my highest was platinum, I still know how to get out of platinum. I understand what needs to be done to get out of platinum. I still haven't done that, but with all the experience that I have, hopefully this video will help you out. And there's a lot of other videos that tell you how to escape your elo and this one took me a while to do so hopefully hopefully this will help you out uh, as much as possible so first let's start with bronze guys bronze now personally i've never been in bronze my highest my lowest was silver and that was back in season three or something but i still don't know why a bronze player struggles right so if you're stuck in bronze you're a person who prioritizes raging over playing I'm not saying everyone, but majority of bronze players, they prioritize raging over playing. And they tend to be very emotional, and that does hold them back. Uh, they have no idea what they're doing. Uh, CS, wards, runes, trades, you know, they just mega autopilot. Emphasis on mega. They just autopilot completely. They, they don't know where to ward, when to ward, how to put a pink ward. The runes are usually just all mixed up. They don't know what they're doing with the runes. Um, they don't know how to trade in lane. They're just very poor at, at, at this kind of thing. Thirdly, they tend to be quite delusional. They believe that they're very good at the game. And that really does hold them back. Because they're, they're in this mindset that I'm so good at this game. When you're not. And that's actually one of the main reasons that holds bronze players back. Is because when you put yourself in this mindset of I'm a good player, you think everything you're doing is right. And you tend to blame people more often because you think they're doing something wrong. It's more it's more about you have to refocus on yourself and see what you're doing wrong so that you can get out of bronze. It only makes sense that way, doesn't it? So I think that's a very important thing is to take a step back, refocus and think, okay, I'm not that amazing at the game. And try to proceed with that. Because League of Legends is actually quite a psychological game. Because your mood, your attitude, it affects how, you know, it affects the outcome of the game. And I think that's a major thing to keep in mind as a bronze player. Fourth, we're going to be talking about how. Bronze players do not understand any champion of the game. They have no idea how champions work. Um, they tend to pick stuff they don't know how to play either. So they, they just have no idea how a champion functions, uh, how he trades in lane, uh, when when does he ulti usually, or things like that. Just things that they don't keep in mind at all. They don't understand any champion in the game. And lastly, they have a complete lack of mechanics, quite obviously, because bronze players tend to be pretty slow or they miss a lot of skill shots. They lack mechanics. All right, This kind of thing can be improved upon with gameplay time. Now, mechanics is a thing that can be improved through gameplay time, but some players are mechanically gifted just with gaming. So it really depends from person to person. It's, I think it's a very individual thing because if you're bronze for like a little bit, and you're good mechanically, you can tend to get out of it um, pretty quick. So that's if you're stuck in bronze. Now, how do you get out of bronze? How do you unstuck, right? My personal, what I personally believe is that you should have two champions for two roles and stop picking random champions you can't play. Say you play mid and jungle. You pick two mid laners, you master them as best as you can, and then play two junglers and master them as best as you can. That's actually a very effective way of climbing, is to play two roles that you can play really well, your favorite two roles, whatever it is, and have two champions in those two roles. That's a good way to proceed with climbing. Now keep in mind, don't just pick a champion and if you lose like three in a row, you're like, okay, whatever, I don't want to main this champion. Like, there has to be 
some dedication to that champion. You can't just play a few games and then be like, okay, whatever. This is not worth playing the ch this champion. I'll move to another. Just think about the champion you're going to play. Practice them. Master them. Look up their build paths. Look up their runes. Look up their patterns. Look up their matchups. You have to put in the effort. If you're really looking to get better at this game, you have to put effort and understand the champion from head to toe. Like You need to know everything about them. Matchups, how they roam, how everything. Everything needs to be kept in mind. And it's actually very good to do this early on when you're in bronze because you can move on to the next elo having this really good grasp of the game and a grasp of your champions. Now secondly, find yourself. You have to find your interest in the champions. Don't stress yourself out. Just find yourself. You're still in bronze and chances are if you're in bronze you're pretty new to the game or you don't play this game often, right? Find yourself. Find your interest in champions. What, what do you like? Do you like ninjas? Do you like shurikens and, and knives and badassery? For me, personally, I love blades. All right, so I have Katarina and Talon as my favorite mid laners and have always been my favorite mid laners uh, for a while now, especially since the Talon rework. I have fell in love with this champion. He parkours over wall. He has a hoodie. I mean, if you guys see my YouTube uh, avatar, it's basically the Assassin's Creed uh, hoodie. Uh, Bayek from Assassin's Creed Origins because I love assassins and I, I love hoodies and I like I like blades so that's why I love Katarina and Talon and I really like their playstyle too and we kick ass with those champions quite a lot so master yourself master those champions find out what you like find out just find yourself as a bronze player that's like the best tip I can give you uh, to get unstuck. Thirdly, try to prioritize CSing. I think that's something that will always be said to you no matter what elo you're in, is to try to prioritize CSing. But it's especially important in bronze to prioritize CSing because as you begin to prioritize it, you begin to understand the effectiveness of it. Like, wow, I have this amount of gold when I recalled because I farmed well. You know, things like that. And that comes in, you know, that comes in big throughout every elo, is to try to prioritize CSing um, as much as possible. Uh, fourth, understand that you are not perfect at the game. And just understanding that you're not perfect at the game, as mentioned before, really helps with climbing, really helps with continuing to the next elo. Because a lot of people fall into this trap that they are good and that they know what they're doing when they don't. And that's something that holds them back. You have to be kind of open about it and understand that you're not that good. Um, next thing, you have to set up room pages for your champions. You can take it from professional players or from streamers. Now, setting up room pages are obviously, it's obviously one of the most important things to do. And bronze players don't do it. Um, some bronze players, they don't know what the best rooms are. And they just pick whatever. They just will pick whatever instinctively goes in their head. You have to understand what's best for this champions like if you go katarina and then let's say you go resolve as primary because oh shit i'm against an azir i should go resolve primary when really resolve second secondary would be better uh for a cat against an azir and you can go domination as you know the first primary so that's just something to keep in mind take it from pro streamers that's why i have my own katarina guide that's why i have my own katarina runes uh, in the Nightbot commands. That's why I do that because I know people sometimes will always ask, what runes do you go? What People always reach out to me and ask, what runes do you use? This and that, this and that. So it's good for, for streamers to have that kind of thing. And as a viewer, you can reach out and, you know, find out what those, what those runes are for any streamer that you prefer to watch or think that they are good. Lastly, you should take objectives when enemies are on death timers, not only kills. When in bronze, if you ace it, the enemy team, what annoys me the most is that someone goes to Wraith, he does Wraith camp, and there's five people dead. Baron is free, for example. You could just do Baron. None of this messing around shit, you know? Like In bronze, you should really try to punish death timers, and this is a team effort, actually. Um, you have to try to make the call to take down a turret or something. I know how stressful it can be when teams don't listen to your calls when you know it's the right thing. I find that extremely stressful.
but you have to try to get down objectives. You have to tell your team this is the right thing to do. You have to convince them as much as you can. All right, if you kill, let's say, ace the enemy team, and it's like 30 plus minutes in the game, if you see a minion pushing to a turret, you can get together, go to towards that turret, take it down. Or you can do Baron, turret, you know, whatever it is that is in the current situation that is best for your team. So that's how you get out of bronze. Uh, next up, if you're stuck in silver. Now, silver players tend to be emotional players. Um, just as much as bronze players, honestly. Bronze players are pretty emotional. Silver players are pretty emotional as well. I think to the same level. Um, it's not like, oh, silver players are less emotional. No, they can actually be just as emotional as bronze players. Um, secondly, their goals are unclear. Uh, CS pushing, back times, uh, team fights. They, they just they don't know what to do, right? Should we do this? Should we do that? Should we do this? Should we back? Should we team fight? They, they don't really know what the right thing is to do. Their goals are unclear. Thirdly, uh, they get behind in levels and feed often. And that happens quite a bit. Um, they get behind in levels. They go 05, 07 in lane quite often. You know, you always have those games that go really bad like this. But silver players, especially, they do this too often. Uh, next up. Mid and late game is an absolute disaster. It's a mystery. You have no fucking idea what's going to happen in silver. You have no idea. No one knows how to end the game. All right. Everyone's just. It's insane. All right. You never know what's going to happen in this ELO. It is, it is a complete disaster. It's mystery. It's just completely mysterious where this game is going to go. Either some, some idiot's going to get caught. 40 plus minutes in the game alone for no reason. Then the enemy team takes Baron. Then the enemy team that has Baron, they die somehow because they do stupid shit. And then your team pushes, but then they die. And then the enemy team is back ahead. It's like so back and forth because their goals are unclear. They don't know what exactly to do after they ace people. They don't know. Like their late game, mid to late game is, is a mess. Okay. It is an absolute mess so that's one of the ma many reasons why people are stuck in silver and i think that's one of the main reasons actually is that mid leg game they are so clueless as to what to do next up build paths and item itemizations they are completely wrong um i see a lot of cats you know i used to see a lot of cats um going rabidon first item when they're like oh six you never do that. First of all, Gunblade is a better item. Um, you should really educate yourself on what's the best items on Cat and, and why they're good. And keep that in mind. Just reassess yourself. Think, what's the best build path in the current situation? Silver players will tend to buy items in a specific order every single game. Oh, they buy Rabdon first item? They do it every single game. They buy Rabidon's death cap as a first item every single game. You know, the, it's... You have to think, okay, if they have a Zed, I might need to go Azania after Gunblade. Or let's say if you're playing a Mage and they have Vladimir and Soraka. Morello, Morello is a very good item against healers, but they never think of that. They never think, okay, this guy has this and that. I should build this. They don't think that way. They just go for a certain build path every game. Lastly, at this stage, they are mechanically okay. They're mechanically okay. They're not amazing, but they can play the game decently enough. Okay. Yeah, you'll get flash fails here and there, or misusing uh, the exhaust summoner spell, etc., etc. But mechanically, they're okay. Now, how do you get out of silver? How to unstuck? All right. You have three champions for two roles that you can play really well and enjoy. Three champions, two roles. So back in bronze, we said two champions for two roles here. At this point, you can extend that. Um, it depends if you're a one-trick pony or not or whatever, but I think most people are not one-trick ponies. But if you are a one-trick pony, that's going to be a bit different because you'd have to be far more dedicated to that champion. So it's a different thing for one-trick ponies. They have to have absolute dedication. 
But personally, I think this is the best way to get out of silver is to have three champions for two rolls in case your champion gets banned. Um, for me, for example, like if my Katarina gets banned, I just play Talon. Um, if Talon gets banned, I play Ahri. You know, those are my three champions. Um, so my champion suggestions are Trinidad, Annie, Hecarim, Warwick, Lysandra, Pantheon, Kale. Those champions are typically not that hard to play and are good. Warwick um, is my personal favorite jungler. Um, he's also very good right now. Um, unless you're watching this video maybe years from now and he got nerfed or something. But I still love Warwick. I think he's one of the best. And a lot of Warwick players don't know that if you hold down Q, you follow flashes and dashes and whatever. Like, You should always try to hold down Q uh, when going on champions if you think they're going to flash or whatever. So you can hold down Q, fear them, and they're going to go on the other side. So you still need to be good with the champions. You can't just play them one game and be like, okay, I'm just going to climb with this champion. But then you lose, and then you're like, wow, this champion is not that good because I lost. You have to still know how to play them. You still have to know how to engage with them, etc., etc. Now, here's champions I don't recommend uh, to play in silver. Uh, Azir, Zed, Yasuo, Katarina. Now... Unless you're a Katarina one trick pony, or a Zed one trick pony, or a Zero one trick pony, whatever, it's a different story. But I really, really think most of the players play really badly with those champions because they think they're good with them when they're not. Now, unless you have put, here's here's the thing, okay? Hear hear me out, hear me out. If you put a lot of time into those champions and a lot of effort, you can probably still keep playing them. You can probably still climb out with the knowledge that you have. However, that is a lot of dedication you have to put. You have to keep this in mind. There has to be a lot of dedication put to climb with those champions because they are mechanically difficult to play. I mean, I don't know when you guys have ever seen a Yasuo player in silver actually do really good. Some might do really good. But the majority of the time, let's just be honest here, they usually go 0-11 and they feed really, really hard. A Zed player doesn't know how to use shadows, and a Zero player doesn't know how to position or nothing. Or Cat players just in silver, they mess up their daggers completely. There's so much... When you play these champions, there's so much room to make mistakes. There's so much room for errors because they're hard to play. They're difficult to master. Now keep in mind, you don't have to listen to me here. You can play those champions. Because as I mentioned before, you can pick the champions that you like, that you have passion for, and find yourself and all that, right? But once you pick them, you have to absolutely be fully dedicated to that champion. You have to master them in and out. And you have to improve mechanically with those champions. That's something to keep in mind. I know I, know I talked about this for, for, for a long time now, but this is a pretty important thing to keep in mind. I still think you should have three champions for two rolls. Just keep that in mind. If you want to climb out of silver, that's just my thoughts, all right? Next up, if you win a fight and you took down turret, immediately recall and regroup. What happens in silver is that when your team takes down a turret, you win a fight. You take down a turret, what do they do? They keep pushing despite the death timers. They don't care. They don't care. They just keep pushing and pushing and pushing until they die or until they do something stupid, right? When you have a lead, you should reassess, regroup, and push together. Do something else, right? You can't just you take down a turret and then you keep going after winning a fight. So you win a fight, you take down a turret, they keep going and going and going. They don't pay attention to the death timers. Now, you can only keep going if the death timers are high enough. If it's like 30 plus seconds and you know you have enough time to take down another turret, or maybe you can do Baron. But what happens in silver, as I've mentioned before, is that people throw like shit. That's why I said mid game and late game is a mystery. It could go in any direction. So it's very important to keep in mind. You don't want to try to throw. You want to try to do the right thing. So tell your team, back off. Stop going for crazy, crazy plays after winning a fight and taking, out, and taking down a turret. Very important. Because that, that's one of the main reasons people lose in silver. Absolute stupid throws, stupid decisions, and things like that. It's out of control. So let's keep it in control. Lastly, I suggest silver players 
you should watch high ELO gameplay uh, over 10 minutes because after 10 minutes, because what I really personally believe, I mean, I've played in silver. I know exactly how it is. It is terrible. It, it is hell, right? If you watch high ELO gameplay past the 10 minutes, you will get a better idea of how mid game and late game works at the highest level of play. And once you grasp that concept, you can use that and climb with it. Try to watch not only one game, two games, just watch as many games as you want. Okay, and, and really try to get the grasp of it. So you could watch streamers or whatever and see how they play up in high elo. And see how the stages of the game go. Uh, how their team decides what to do after 10 minutes. So that's how you get out of silver. Next up, we're going to talk about gold. Oh boy, gold. This is where most people are. Um, gold, if you're stuck in gold, here's, here are the things, right? Point one, throwing. A lot of throwing. Hard games are terrifying. Okay, hard games and gold, they, they're just scary. They're almost as bad as silver, except it's way, way scary. Um, again, it's a mystery how this game goes. It's a mystery. There's way too much throwing. Baron throws, uh, getting aced for no reason because you didn't recall a lot of throws. Secondly, gold players tend to be lazy. They know what to do, but they have poor execution. They know what the right move is. They know what the right thing to do is, but they just don't really go for it. They don't commit to it. And if I can give an example here, um, they know that they know that they can trade with a Twisted Fate who just used W on a minion, but they don't do it because they lazy it. They're either autopiloting or not paying attention. Or it could be for other reasons. Or another example is they know that they should draw bot, but they, they don't have that good of an execution for it. They know they should do it, but they don't. Or just mechanical errors. Like, they do mechanical errors. They know when to go in, how to go in, but they poorly execute it. Thirdly, they have, they take extreme mega risks uh, trading in lane. They gamble their health. Uh, at this point, they're still improving at the game. So they gamble their health quite a bit. Um, they go in for trades. The enemy trades them. Um, but they really play aggressive, which I can kind of admire to some extent because at least they're going aggressive. They're just they're not scared to make a play, you know, but they take insane risks. Uh, they don't even sometimes pay attention to the enemy jungler or where he is. They'll, they'll just go in and trade like every single time. Every single time they're built his up, they're going to go for a trade. When really it's better to try to wait out cooldowns of the enemy teammate, uh, rather the enemy player in the lane, wait it out and try to punish something or, you know, th things like that. They gamble their health a lot. That's what I'm trying to say. After that, um, build paths are not always on point. They buy every way, every game. So just as in silver, gold players, sometimes they build every way, every game. They go Gunblade first item and then maybe a Rabadon every single time. Not all gold players. I'm not going to say all because I know some actually do this right. But most gold players, they tend to buy every way, every game. After that, actually, they are mechanically good players. And I'm going to say that. I really think gold players can play mechanically good. This is, I've seen Katarina players in gold. They actually aren't completely terrible because, you know, they put a lot of time into their champion. And I think that they are mechanically good. I've seen good Z players. I've seen good cat players. I've seen decent players who are one trick ponies of those champions and can actually play really good. Um, so yeah, they're not completely terrible mechanically. They can play their champions pretty well. And lastly, they tend to have confidence issues um, after landing phase. Uh, their uncertainty... Like, they're very uncertain of their ability to play the game optimally, and they trap themselves in the elo that they're at. So, they're uncertain 
of their ability. They're not sure how good they are. They, they tend to have confidence issues after the laning phase because, okay, they'll whoop ass after lane, but then they start to mess up. They feel like they're going to mess up a lot in team fights, and they're unsure if they're good or not. And that's why they kind of trap themselves in their elo is because really they're actually good players and if you're certain of how you play and you try to do the right thing as best as you can you can get out of gold um they tend to have confidence issues after lane not all of them some gold players they tend to have that so that's if you're stuck in gold now how do you get out of gold how do you unstuck if, you're un if you want to unstuck a gold, you got to work on getting three champions for two roles you love. So just as the ELO before this, you try to get three champions for two roles. Uh, you got to punish weak lanes and punish mistakes. For example, Cat versus Vagar. Because as Katarina, you should be able to completely dump on a Vagar because you're Cat. And you're really strong. You have a better early game than him. He needs to stack with his Q. So in certain matchups, you need to understand that your matchup is more favorable for you, and you should play around that. Or if you see the enemy is a Vladimir and your cat, it's a bit different story. Or if you see it's Rise and your cat, it's different. You have to play differently. You have to play a bit safer. Or Azir, you have to start Doran Shield, and you gotta go Resolve Tree, because that really helps to go Resolve Tree second against champs like Azir. So you have to punish weak lanes and punish mistakes. And play safe when you have to. Uh, thirdly, when lanes are hard, your job is to not the, let the enemy laner snowball. That's something that's very important. If you go 0-3, you should, your job at this point is to not let him snowball out of control. Your job is to hold the lane and make sure it doesn't just get demolished, destroyed, like you go 0-10 in lane. Because you just keep trying to fight him over and over and over and over. And I've seen that happen. I've seen that happen. They just keep trying to trade with him. And just allowing the enemy laner to snowball completely out of control. That's something you need to, to need to avoid. So that's something very important to keep in mind. Don't let the enemy laner snowball when your lanes are tough. Avoid surrendering. This elo is very unpredictable and they're are a lot of throws in this elo so that's something some go players tend to do is they surrender quite a lot what even though it's possible to win because go players they're just not that amazing and they tend to throw games quite a lot i'm sure if you've been in gold and you have a lot of experience in gold you probably know what i'm talking about these people tend to throw a lot this elo is so unpredictable it's insane so try your best not to surrender unless games are completely completely no chance to win right but try to avoid it my next point is to try to carry games um never play support dodge if you have to unless you are a support main now i really don't think that in gold you should play support um as mentioned if you're a support main whatever right that's your champion your you do whatever you want that's your role but i really think in gold if you want to get out of gold you should be the one to carry you should try to carry yourself and make it all happen make it all work because if you apply the things that i mention to get out of gold and you have this information you should use that information and get your ass out of gold you have that information not everyone's amazing gold and i really think that you should be the one to carry as best as you can my last point is that i want you to look at every death you get over 18 minutes like it can potentially lose you the game not even 18 it could be 20 minutes right after that time mid game late game try to look at every death like it can lose you the game and eventually you'll grow into this this thing where you don't really want to die for no reason and and that's something to keep in mind. Less deaths is always good. That means less money for the enemy team. And that also means you can get, you know, when you're alive, you can do stuff. You can take down a turret. You can proceed 
to win the game. You can do things that will make you win. Whereas if you're dead, it's tough, right? Try to avoid dying as much as you can. That's what I'm trying to say. Unless your death is absolutely worth it. Like if you're a top lane split push Nasus and you pulled five people bot lane and your team is doing Baron, it's perfect, right? Dying like that is perfect scenario. But if you're playing Katarina or something or AD carry, try to look at every death like it can potentially lose you the game. And try to see why you died. What was the cause of your death? So that's how to get out of gold. Next up, the final one, Platinum. Ah, Platinum. Platinum. <sighs> they are ego warriors. Let's just say that. They are extremely, extremely egotistical. A lot of the time, they are ego warriors. They believe they are the best of the best of the best. They're the best cat. They're the best whatever, right? Most bot players, they really think they're always good. But they can back this up because their mechanics are exceptionally good. I've seen amazing cat players in Platinum. They can really play this game well. So they can back up their ego with displaying good mechanical gameplay. That's the thing about Platinum players. And thirdly, Platinum is my personal ELO hell. Uh, for many years, I've been in Platinum since Season 4. Yeah, Season 4 was the first time I hit Platinum. So Season 5, 6, 7, 8, I've been Platinum pretty much. I end up Platinum in all those years. It is my personal ELO hell. It is a struggle to get out of Platinum. And this is why I'm. This is why we are, we are stuck in platinum here. Uh, fourthly, when they fall behind, they don't know how to mitigate that failure. They don't know how to lessen up that failure and stop making more fails. I think that's something that needs to be kept in mind. Um, as a plat player, when you try to fall behind, that they don't know how to, you know, just erase that failure move on that kind of thing they don't know how to stop making mistakes they keep doing the mistake over and over and then that's when they fall behind early it, it hurts them but when they get ahead they do serious damage they, they kick ass man they they roam it all over the place they're 15-1 on katarina they're they're snowballing the game out of control and they tend to be the reason the team wins they when they get ahead Oh my god, you should see them. You should see them when they get ahead. They, they go out of control. So that's the thing about plat players. When they fall behind early, they don't really go over. They don't think of the game very well. They just do really bad. When they get ahead, they do a lot. Lastly, they don't know how to get carried. Um, for example, they don't know how to play around Effet Tristana. So if you're like mid lane cat and you have Tristana AD carry, they don't know how to get carried. Because um, it is better to make sure that Tristana lives. It is better to make sure that Tristana is in team fights. So what cat players would do would be, okay, I'm just going to fight without Tristana being around me. But if Tristana was around you, she'd do serious damage. Sometimes you have to allow yourself to be carried. There, it's It's not like... An embarrassing thing like oh shit I got carried I should be the one carrying sometimes your team's gonna carry it happens you know not every game you're gonna carry carry the whole game you have to keep in mind that it is possible for Tristana AD carry to win you the game because she's Tristana right so how do you get out of platinum how do you unstuck so to get out of platinum you need to start realizing the small kind of errors you do and they add up big time. Every little error you do, um, it really adds up, and you begin to see it more and more and more, and try to avoid doing that thing more and more. So try, start to see the small mistakes. Uh, secondly, you have to give up CS if you need to. You need to lessen the failures. Mitigate the failures. If you go for a CS and then you get poked for it, it's usually not worth it. You can give up CS if you need to. This is especially, especially good if you're playing Katarina against, say, an Azir. As Azir, he outranges you, right? He has better range than you. You try to go for a CS, you took damage. It sucks to take damage like that. 
if if you give up CS, you don't take that poke and you don't just have so much trouble in lane. So it's okay to give up CS if the lane is not so favorable for you. Because sometimes you have to, let's be real. Thirdly, you should consider team comps. Uh, look at your team and champs like, and try to paint images in your head of like, how is this game gonna go? All right, consider the team comp. And look at your team. Okay, I have a Sejuani jungle, I'm Katarina, okay. She's going to ulti. I can maybe follow up on that. And if I get in trouble, I have Lulu support. She can ult and shield me. What do they have? Oh, they have Lissandra ulti. Let's watch out for that in team fights. You know, just get a, like a like a brief overview just before you enter the game. How is this game going to go? How is this? Is this going to be good for us? Yeah, just it's good to come into the game with that kind of thing before entering the game. Just kind of come into it thinking, okay, this is what I'm going to expect. Um, after that, you should try to dodge if things look bad. I have seen so many players, man. So many players, they stay in champ select if they have like a like a Nunu AD carry. <laughs> that guy who's trolling. Let's say someone's actually trolling. You have no reason to stay in that game. Dodge. Leave it. It's not like a bad thing if you dodge. You only lose a little bit of LP anyway. I'm, so, I'm sorry, I lose my voice, guys. <laughs> I'm talking for a lot. Um... But yeah, if you have a Nuno AD carry, dodge. You have no reason to play with this guy. He's going to make you lose. He's going to make you lose the game. Avoid playing with someone like that. Avoid playing with that person so you can get out of your elo, so you can progress and stop losing because of stupid people like that. Or let's say just... Let's just say if someone's not trolling and your comp is really bad, like let's say you have... AD carry top, AD carry bot, and a support that's Zyra, and you have no front line, and your cat and your jungle is like Master Yi, right? The enemy can just all build Ninja Tabby against Master Yi, the AD carry top laner, and the AD carry bot laner. You know, it, think of it that way. Sometimes it's better to dodge games where your comp is really bad and their comp is way better. And so it really depends on the comp, whether you should dodge or not, or if someone's trolling. After that, patient aggression. You need to try to watch your team's cooldowns. Um, Lulu alt, Pathian alt, etc., etc. Now, patient aggression. What what does that mean? It's to basically watch your allies' cooldowns. Watch if they have this thing up. Look if they have ulti, because you can check if they have ulti just over the mini map. It shows the little full circle on top of their champion portrait. You can see if their ulti is up. Or you can see if, uh, you know, if they didn't use E, it means they might use E on you. Or, you know, like Lulu Polymorph or something. Or Lulu E, she will shield you. Or Polymorph someone. Just, like, keep in mind of the your allies' cooldowns as well as the enemy cooldowns. It really helps. It really helps you play aggressive, but, like, in a patient way. And I really think that's, like, the assassin way. Like assassin type of aggression is patient aggression is to really pay attention to cooldowns and it really just doesn't apply to just assassins it applies to even 80 carries or just any role in general is to keep in mind of your allies cooldowns and lastly play champions you are really good with you can't play all the champions well is to basically if you climb the platinum with katarina to just keep playing katarina you know you need to understand the reason why you got to this elo is because you've been kicking ass with Cat. You know what I mean? You've been kicking ass. Play champions you are very good with. It doesn't have to be just Cat. Like if you play someone else you're really good at, you can play them. You don't. You, if you're not necessarily a Cat in a one trick pony, you can play other champions that you're good at and try to climb that way. So it's very important to play champions that you are very good with, and don't try to first time champs in ranked. For God's sake, don't play the first. Don't play champions that just got released. Oh, look, Kaisa just got out. I want to play her in rank for the first time. You know, like, just don't do it, man. You're trying to win. You're playing ranked. Everyone's trying to, like, everyone's trying to climb. Everyone's, you have to, when you hop in ranked, you need to try to play your best, right? So keep that in mind that you have to try to play the best champion, champions that you have learned, have mastered, and can play well. 
that is about it, guys. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully, this little video helped you out to escape your ELO, whatever ELO you're in. Um, and yeah, I will hopefully see you guys on the Rift. Make sure you follow me on twitch.tv slash Nino 9 It's in the chat box right here. And I will see you guys on the Rift. Peace out.